So this video is for me to share my feedback after I successfully passed the eGPT V2 exam. Uh, that being said, I like to jump into the information. Let's go to the second section, preparing for success. In this, in this section, I wanted to lay out a, my foundation, my foundation uh, on learning new stuff, on enhancing my old knowledge and everything in between. Uh, there are three things among uh, many that I do, but these three are primary and uh, they are really important for me. Uh, I follow them each time I learn a new thing or again, when I try to enhance my old knowledge. Um, have a note-taking habit. It's really important to have a note-taking habit. Why? Well, I've said here, developing a structured note-taking habit is imperative for effective learning and mastery of any subject. Well, the, let's say the conclusion is that uh, a note-taking habit in the long run, as you can see, in the long term will facilitate comprehension by enabling you to discern essential information and filter out the little details. So having a strong note-taking habit in the long run, when you try to learn a new subject, a new topic, when you try to read something, you will have an intuition on what is the important knowledge, what knowledge do you don't, what knowledge you don't know, what knowledge you want to gather, and so on. So have a note-taking habit is very strongly recommended. Create a schedule. Why a schedule is important. Establishing a well-defined schedule is crucial to maintain focus in our digital world. By allocating dedicated time for learning coupled with a strategic note-taking approach and a clear mindset, you can minimize external interruptions and enhance your learning experience. Well, you can see what I'm wearing. Uh, there are the some Sony uh, noise cancellation headphones, um, noise cancellation headphones. I want to focus in the schedule that I have. In the schedule that you have, try to focus on the material that you are learning. Try to, minim to minimize the external um, stimuli, audio stimuli, video stimuli, everything. Try to keep it down to a minimum. Now, that works for me. That might not work for you. Maybe you like to see tutorials. Maybe you like to speak with someone. Maybe you like to learn from someone by talking or whatever. This is my way of learning. I really like to read things, not to watch a video or something. I feel that I lose time and I feel that the video is too slow for me. I don't like it. I like to read. Ask questions and be curious. Why? curiosity, inquiry, fascination, or whatever you want to call it, plays a pivotal role in personal improvement by actively seeking a clarification, addressing knowledge gaps, and fostering a deeper understanding, you actively engage with the subject matter, promoting active involvement and intellectual growth. Now, this is the most important thing to uh, the essence of ask questions and be curious. In other words, have questions, seek for answers, and then put them to the test. Well, if you try to think about it, when you are a little kid and when we all were little kids, we always, always ask questions. We see something that's fascinating or maybe is distracting. We ask a question. What is that? What is that? Why? 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 And so on. In our mind, we try to gather knowledge and then we try to have questions, questions about it. Have questions. Have questions is really important. Now that we talked about what I do, uh, let's say my framework, my learning framework, let's go into the understanding the GPT learning material. I will just say a few words. The learning material for the GPT V2 exam is structured in four main topics. The topics are assessment and methodologies, host and network auditing, host and network penetration testing, and web application penetration testing. As you can see, I also note the um, 
total hours that you need to go through all the learning material. This is really subjective. Almost all the videos that you will see in the learning material will have the following style of teaching. The first part of the video will be theory, then the next part will be demonstration, and then practice, 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 practice. Yeah, so you will see this pattern in the learning material for the AGPT V2 exam. The what else I can say? I will say in the understanding the AGPT V2 exam. The AGPT, AGPT <laughs> the names, the names is like a robot in Star Wars or something. The AGPT V2 exam is a dynamic exam, meaning that the flags needed from you to find are dynamic. They change, they are not the same. Now, have in mind that the dynamic questions that I had in my exam were the only questions that after I press the submit button, I cannot change the answer to. I had two dynamic questions, but I saw people having more than that. The rest of the questions were multiple choice, single answer questions, meaning that you have a question, you get four answers, but only one is the correct one. For these types of questions, you can change your answer at any time and you can also ping the ones you're not sure about so you can come to them later. So you can be relaxed. So there will be 35 questions, or at least I had 35 questions in this version of the exam. In these 35 questions, I had two dynamic questions. As, as I said, the answer after I press submit on those questions are, you cannot change it. It's done. That is the answer. But the other 33 questions that I had, those were not dynamic questions. I can ping them if I'm not sure about uh, an answer. I don't even have to answer to a question from those 33. I just ping it and I come back to it later if I want it. Another important point is that the learning material is not what you will have in the exam. So this point is really, 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 really important. The learning material that I talked about shortly is not what you will have in the exam. This sounds really, really, really strange, right? And I say, I said, I said here, right. So the learning material, why the learning material is, is for the AGPT V2 exam if we don't have it in the exam. This is why I think that the course is absolutely fantastic because the learning material is preparing your mind, is showing you how to think, think like a hacker. It's not the kind of the exam that you read some text pages in the documentation or whatever, and then it will ask you some definitions from it. This is a hands-on exam. You will have to think with the strategies presented in the learning material. So, in other words, you know that in school, you learn a topic or at least that was the way when I was in school. I learned the topic with the teacher and the next day maybe we, we, we had uh, to take an exam or something about the things that we learned yesterday. But we had to, to learn that material like word by word and in the exam we had to say it word by word. This, that is not, is, that is not practical, that is not something that you will remember, that is not useful. This learning material is fascinating because we'll present to you the, the, the theory, but we'll prepare you and we'll show you strategies. You will learn how to think like a hacker. Advice to pass the exam 100%. Have a structured approach based on the penetration testing execution standard. Well, yes and no. Uh, the penetration execution um, standard, right? The test. Maybe you heard about it. Maybe you read it. Maybe you, I don't know. Maybe you did not heard about it. But the penetration testing execution standard is right here. I said is the best, the most complete penetration testing methodology to date. 
is the golden standard for penetration test execution. It covers everything from the start to the end, and it was developed by a team of information security professionals. So as I said in there, it's, it's a structure. It's a structure that is made by professionals, security professionals. And it's so important from the beginning, especially with this exam that is the junior, let's say, security penetration testing exam. It's so important to lay out the basics, the foundations. And this penetration testing execution standard, it's a really, 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 really good uh, foundation. and. and uh, not even that, it's actually really, really used in the professional um, market also. So it's, it's just a foundation and let's say a point of interest, maybe if you want to call it for lack of a better word, a framework, let's say. Some other um, things that I can say. This is a question that maybe I want to ask you. What questions from the exam were the hardest and I can reformulate it to ask you what questions or sections or videos or uh, subjects were the hardest from the learning material for you. It's really important to understand some sections. For instance, for me, pivoting and privilege ex uh, escalation were the hardest for me. I never had a security background, not even a network background before taking this exam. I just learned everything from this exam. Two months, I had two months and we expanded it, I think two weeks, but I finished it um, faster than two months. So that that's all that we had. And uh, pivoting and privilege escalation. So in theory, they are not that hard. You can understand them, but in the exam, it's it's like uh, you will be nervous, you will lose a bit yourself. There were moments when I had to take a break, when I had to go drink some water, when I had to just release my mind because I, I the information was all over the place in my mind, all over the place. So as I said, pivoting and privilege escalations, I think, and I know that for me were the hardest parts, let's say. That being said, try to understand what is the hardest part in the learning material for you. You will know this after you will take the the note uh, the notes. After you will take the notes, you will you will know. After you take the labs in the learning material, you will know. You will know for sure what is for you the hardest part. Concentrate on that. Get into the habit of saving every useful information because you will need it and you will go back to it. So again, during the exam, you will use tools that will scan stuff. When you scan for information, when you gather information, when you take information, just save it. Save it in a file, save it somewhere. You will need it. This is a really good habit to have. Validate and more validate. Check the creds found. Uh, validation and more validation goes hand in hand with uh, save every useful information. You will see services, you will have uh, websites, locations that you have to use credentials. When you have to use credentials, always pay attention where you use them and you will figure out where to use them because the software that you use, for instance, to to have a, a brute force, you will have to use the service as well. You will know the service that you want to brute force on. Uh, so use it on the correct service. Don't use it in, in everything that you find, right? It's like credentials when you log in on your computer, when you log in on your uh, email, when you log in on your social media, right? So just validate, validate, validate always and be attention where you validate them. If you have the time, revalidate with another tool. Yeah, this is just, let's say, an optional point. If you have the time, revalidate with another tool. The video is 20 minutes long, it's crazy. Practice pivoting, privilege escalation, uploading payloads and configuring payloads and so on. Based on what you think that is hardest for you, just practice it. Um, I will put in this uh, section description of this video, learning materials. You maybe you heard about try hack me, hack the box, and so on. I will put anyway. I will put information in the description of this video and practice what you don't understand that 
uh, well. Take your time during the exam. This is a really important point because I had colleagues that failed the first time they took the exam and then passed the second time. Just don't rush. You have 48 hours to finish this exam. Take your time. Don't rush. I, I just, my strategy, even before taking the exam, in my mind was set. So I knew that in the first day I will finish everything. And in the second day, I will revalidate everything. And that was exactly what I did. And in the second day, of course, that I changed my answers. Take your time. Don't rush. Concentrate, take pauses, go have a fresh breath of air. You have a lot of time to finish the test. Take your time. Really important. In the last part, the conclusion, recap the key points. Encourage to implement strategies and practice diligently, additional resources and support for further learning. For every topic covered here or any other questions that you have, as I said, just use the comment section below. Right, so if you want to rewatch this video, please rewatch it. If you have questions, just shoot them in the comment section. I really hope that any kind of information, even a small I don't know, word or something, if it helps you with the GPTV2 exam, I am really glad. I know that you will take this exam and you will pass the exam easy. I used everything that I said in this video and I take the I took the exam in two months, as I said, and I uh, and I passed it in the first try. Easy peasy lemon easy. <laughs> Use the comment section, guys. Ask me questions. I want to share with you every information that I know. And yeah, until the next one, take care and bye.